everybody. I hope you're all uh, staying safe and keeping well. Uh, for our devotional thought this morning, I want to take it uh, straight out of the parenting blooper reel uh, this morning for you. And I want to highlight a mistake that a couple of people made about Jesus that if we're not careful, we're just as capable of making today. So I want to plunge you straight into the Mary and Joseph uh, parenting uh, manual. And you'll find the story in Luke chapter 2. Uh, the backdrop to it is that as good Jewish citizens, they were in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Passover. But when the celebration was ended, it was time to head home. Now here's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verses 33 and um, sorry, 43 and 44. It says, after the celebration was over, uh, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Here's the problem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed. Now you could circle or highlight that word, assumed. They assumed he was among the other travellers, but he didn't show up that evening. And when he didn't show up, they started looking for him among their friends and relatives. Can you imagine going down in history as the two people that were charged and commissioned to nurture and look after the Son of God only to lose him? Imagine losing Jesus. And I don't want to do too much finger pointing here because I know I've drove off and left our kids in a couple of places and uh, I'm sure you have too potentially. But this is like sort of flying home from Tenerife with your 12 year old still at the poolside at the hotel. Uh, they had travelled for a full day before they actually noticed that Jesus was missing. And so here's the mistake that Joseph and Mary made and it's so instructive for us because we could, we're very capable of doing the same thing. They presumed Jesus was present when he was actually absent. And I want to say this to you today. Uh, be careful of presumption. Uh, be careful of presumption. So perhaps there are some of you and you have decisions to make. Um, you could be at that moment at school, maybe choosing A-levels or whenever you're beyond that, you're looking at prospectuses and degree courses and tech courses and you're really thinking about your direction and making pivotal future decisions. Or maybe you're at that place of uh, weighing up a jog a job interview or a change of direction or perhaps maybe even it's a relationship decision. You're, you're maybe thinking about becoming more than friends now. Uh, and so all of these are key pivotal decisions. But I want to just say to you, beware of presumption. Here's a couple of great verses that will, will, will keep us aligned. They're found in really well known, found in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I love that word all. Um, it tells me that there's no aspect of our lives that God is not interested in. There's no facet about us that he's not concerned about, doesn't have a plan for. And so I encourage you today, especially when you face those transitional moments in life as a student or at work or relationally, what's God saying to you? What's God saying to you in those moments? Be careful of moving off in presumption. Be careful of moving off uh, without a word. You see, Mary and Joseph presumed that God was in the journey when he wasn't. And so they had to retrace their steps and they had to go back again. You know, I remember when I was 18, uh, just a couple of years ago, actually, uh, and I remember uh, choosing a university course. And my selection criteria at the time was there was a few friends doing that course. Uh, I thought it might open up a couple of opportunities for me. But the reality was it wasn't me. Um, it wasn't in line with my passions, it wasn't in line with my gifting even, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It wasn't who God made me to be. It wasn't in line with, with how he wired me. And in short, I walked in that direction for a year, down the direction of that course, and it got to the stage I realised, do you know, God is not in this. God is not walking with me in this. So then guess what? I had to turn and go back. Now, I want to clarify this. When we talk about God's presence, we know that God's everywhere. He's omnipresent. Theologically, we understand that. But when I say God's not in it, he's not with it, I mean that his hand's not on it. I mean that his favour and his blessing, it's hard, It's no. there's no ease, there's no peace, there's no, he, he's, he's not in it, his anointing's not on it. Because here's the lesson, friends, we can't walk off on our own direction. We can't head off to Nazareth and expect God to run, chase after us, catch up with us and then put his hand a blessing on what we want to do and bless our ideas. Rather, we need to wait on God. Even when everybody else is heading in the other direction, we need to wait on him, wait in his direction, wait in his counsel. And then when we align ourselves with his mission and his direction, that's when he'll put 
his hand on it. Do you know, there are two ways um, that ultimately we're, we learn anything. Two ways you can learn. Number one, you can learn by instruction. Number two, uh, you can learn by experience. Now let me suggest to you that the first one is a much better way to learn because it saves you often a lot of pain. You see, when we learn by experience, it often means going off in the wrong direction and then we have to retrace our steps and come back again uh, and we lose time and we can lose relationships and we can lose all these sorts of things. And so it's best to wait on God in the first place and do it right the first time. And so what you have here is you have Mary and Joseph and so they follow this caravan of people that are all headed to Nazareth and Jesus is left in the temple. And so you actually have Joseph and Mary taking on board the herd mentality because everybody else is doing it. And so they get into the herd and they walk this way when the very thing that they have been called to do, which is nurture Jesus, look after Jesus. And so they're walking away in the opposite direction of what they've been called to do. Um, one of the tragedies actually in the Old Testament, and again, it's this herd mentality, was a guy called King Saul. You know, King Saul actually lost his office effectively because he freaked out one day because all the people were leaving him the people were all going this way and Saul was told to wait and he panicked he didn't wait and he, he, he succumbed to the pressure of the people and it ended up costing him his office it ended up costing God's plan for his life and you know here's the thing about that wide road and that herd mentality God is seldom found friends walking broad roads he is seldom found on them. Rather, he walks that road less traveled, that road of sacrifice, that road of self-denial, that road of uniqueness. It's the way of the cross, really. And as followers of Jesus, we're called to that road as well. It's a narrow road. It's a narrow, it's a road less traveled. It's a, it's a road of creativity and self-denial and, and individuality, but it's a road of purpose as well. Because we have two options, really, in this life, and especially in this generation of social media. And, you know, we can fit in, or we can stand out. We can fit in or we can stand out. And just because, I want you to catch this, especially young people, uh, just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that God is in it. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that God is in it. Everybody that day was heading to Nazareth. The crowd was going that way, but God wasn't there. He was back in Jerusalem. And you see, you can be popular or you can be significant and they're often not the same thing. And we want to be popular, we want to be accepted. But the better thing, the better path, is to be significant. And often that means staying behind when other people are going the other direction. I wonder if there are decisions that you're faced with today and the herd is going one way, but the blessing of God means staying behind. You know, we had a great testimony of one of the guys in our church, and especially at this time when governments are having to step in with finances and help businesses. And his accountant test, uh, shared with him that because he kept his VAT in order, his tax in order, everything went through the till, there was no shortcuts, there was no uh, looking to personal gain. Because everything was order, in order, he qualified and was able to uh, survive an environment that other people were drowning in. Why? Because he, he had waited behind when everybody else was off doing uh, their own thing. And God blesses integrity. He blesses uh, waiting upon him. Uh, you see, you can't do it. We can't do things our way and expect God to bless them. You know, Samson found that out. Uh, that strong man uh, in the lap of Delilah when the Philistines came upon them. He presumed God's presence. He says, I will arise like other times and scatter these boys off me. And then he realized, and the Bible says this, Samson re did not realize that the spirit of God was gone from him. And so he expected to just do it his own way and God would bless it. But here's the thing, friends. God does not bless our agenda. He doesn't chase after us and rubber stamp our plans. Rather, we're called to wait, trust in the Lord, wait on him, find out what his plan, his agenda is for our lives and actually partner with him in his mission. It's not about us. It's all about him and how we can partner with him in his agenda and his mission and then God's favour and God's blessing will come upon us. So remember today the problem with presumption. Uh, rather, whatever decisions you're faced with, no, big, no matter how big or small, just know this, God is interested in every facet of our lives and all our ways acknowledge God and he will direct our paths. And you know, like, like uh, Mary and Joseph, we've all been given this call to nurture the presence of God in our lives, to nurture Jesus, to nurture God. And in order to do that, we shouldn't presume, rather we should pray. We should lean into God and what he's saying to us. And unlike Mary and Joseph and unlike me, when you trust in the Lord in all your ways and lean not on your own understanding, 
when you pray rather than presume, it will save you. Going down a road, should it be a day, a week, a year, a number of years, that uh, will protect you from that. And so you, can, you don't have to find yourself retracing your steps and losing time and losing relationships. And you know what? Here's the, here's the good news today. You see, if you have been on the wrong path or you've found that you know, you've been a long while going in the wrong direction, the good news today is that God is still where you left him. He's still in the temple, still wanting to be found of you, still wanting to uh, take lordship of your life. And so look, if one decision took you the wrong way and had you walking in the wrong direction, just remember this, one good decision can set you back on the right path and can get you walking the right way into the fullness of what God has for you because he has a plan for all of our lives. And so I want to leave you with that today. hope it's been helpful. And look, remember, if we can help you in any way, if, if that strikes a chord with you, if we can pray for you, support you, why not drop us an email, support at gpastors.co.uk or maybe comment down below and some of our team will get in touch with you. So look guys, have a really great day and God bless you.